so I'm Laura Dvorkin and I'm the co-curator of the Bunker Art Space in West Palm Beach, Florida. And that is the home of um, the collection of Beth Root and DeWoody. And I've been with Beth for over 12 years. Actually, I think it's over 14. I also organize large presentations of the collection at institutions. And I organize all the shows that Beth herself curates. Uh, and so the bunker is really a collaboration between Beth, myself, and my co-curator, uh, Maynard Monroe. So we all curate. And then we also have a guest curator every year. So we are also in the, in the process now of uh, curating 2021. How do you feel about experiencing art online? I mean, I've, I've attended um, quite a few Zoom uh, studio visits and talks. I do think that that is something great that has come out of COVID. You have institutions that are, you know, they might not be in these big areas like New York or LA or an artist studio, for instance, might be somewhere else or out of the mm -hmm. country. And you have the ability to give access to that. It is harder. I mean, even like artists that I've spoken to, it's harder for them to like, well, how do I portray my studio in uh, a Zoom studio visit? But I think that's a great way of experiencing the work I, I'm not sure if, how I feel about online viewing rooms. It's still like, what are we doing, you know? And ultimately it's like, it's any way to get the art out there and to mostly, um, you know, primarily support artists. So I guess if that's working, great. I think, you know, we're also discussing Instagram. I actually, I do find a lot of work on Instagram. I, yeah, I was gonna ask you, do you find artists through other artists like that's usually how I expand my artist network is like I'll follow some artists and they'll share posts of work by other people and like it's kind of just uh, a domino effect like that. I feel it is similar where it is this domino effect you know there's I, I follow a bunch of galleries too so I'm always aware of their programming whether it's via email or Instagram but I mean Instagram you get to see the installation shots without going and granted being in person is the best way to experience the work and ultimately like for acquisitions I try to do that but yeah I, I do feel like it is like this domino effect um this wonderful domino effect and then also I mean Beth is acquiring sometimes at such a, a fast pace and and I see what's coming into the collection and I'm like oh this, you know, like there's lots of dialogue too. I also personally, I keep a Pinterest board for nothing else, but helping me remember works that I see. So I always, if there's an artist that I see on Instagram, even just to keep it in a systematic order, I will search it on the, in, you know, on the internet and then I'll pin it. So then like, if I have a client who's interested in whatever it is like I just I just go through my Pinterest board which has like probably yeah. a thousand now but yeah <laughs> um that's a good idea though mm -hmm. I like that as I'm sure you're aware um a lot of things have been surfacing about art museums galleries these you know big cultural institutions that have been so important to society and a light is being shed that is very very ugly. Do you think they're they're going to have a comeback? Do you think they can redeem themselves? It's very complicated. I talk to people who have viewpoints against, you know, museums and cultural institutions and then others that are like really for them and are on bo both sides of the coin, really. I think that museums right now are adapting to a system and and a greater a greater accountability to presenting the work that they show. And I see that, you know, I definitely see that. Um, and as far as if they're showing um, it works that could be very sensitive to uh, groups of people, um, that that is this, that sensitivity is taken into consideration significantly. The cultural institutions, they have a greater responsibility to, to presenting the world you know, than other institutions or other, you know, aspects of culture. But I do think we're going to go through a period of censorship that's going to be 
more than we bargained for. For instance, the, um, the Philip Gustin show. Most of the people I talk to believe that the show should have never been canceled. But then they also say, well, of course, the museums were terrified. And everyone can believe that too. Unfortunately, cancel culture <laughs> might actually cancel culture. You know? Yeah. And that's not a popular opinion, but it's, it's something that we have to think about. You know, it is promoting censorship. There was a really great uh, New York Times article written recently by this professor um, called Loretta Ross. But it says, instead of calling people out, what if we called them in? And it's talking about just the idea of we have to hold people accountable, but can we do it in a more compassionate way? I think that there needs to be more, I don't know, compassion. However, museums have to go undergo a significant change. And it starts with first, you know, potentially giving back, you know, articles that are from other countries, whether it be Africa or elsewhere, uh, I say potentially is in like the offer should always be there now, but that accountability is there about where the original places these objects came from. Also fully explaining it, you have, uh, you know, these full descriptions about Monet's and then hardly any descriptions about a work that comes from, from Ghana. I mean, it's like there's, and, and why don't we have this? Why aren't there more people of color that are, um, you know, at high levels in museums. And so I think there's, there's a lot of that shift too, you know, and to have to change the canon, to look at what it was beforehand. Yeah, I mean, I, there's so much room for, for conversation there. I think as far as like the toxicity of, of the work culture, I think that we have to define what that toxicity is it's such a gray area now, you know, I think that it's like, okay, what is acceptable and what is simply not acceptable? And the line is here now and, and really adhering to that. Yeah. There's so many aspects to this, so I don't know how many. I no, I know. Absolutely. Um, I, I agree with you though, that the cancel culture is, is, definitely closing the door to communication and you know having these important conversations that are actually going to push us forward. I studied art history and we only studied European and North American art. So there's failure on so many levels. That's another very complicated um, conversation um, in terms of whether we can separate the artist from who they are and, and their actions outside of creating artwork. I don't know if I can actually, you know, it's so hard. I think that there are certain things where I'm like, okay, we need, right. For me, I'm like, okay, well, we need to have more compassion here, but I'm like, the work has like the, a hand that has touched this work is that person and it is sharing their mind. And do I want to hear it? You know, I think with an artwork, you feel like there is a shared experience. And I think that that's what makes an also like an artist's legacy too so powerful is that after they have passed, it's like you can still almost have a conversation with them. You can feel that in a museum or a gallery, you know, it's like they are giving you this, um, you know, perspective into their mind and it can be while silent, a conversation. But it's like, I don't wanna have a conversation with artists that are in that category. But I think this will, I mean, heavily develop over the next uh, even year. And I think another um, really interesting question to propose too is like, who gets to tell the story? Is it personal histories? Is art, do we have shared histories at all? Um, you know, that's another interesting perspective too, you know? And that's getting into like the Dana Schutz thing and all of that. If you're an artist that does not uh, identify in a specific way, can you have that point of view and that history? Are we all having that history right now? Because the personal history and like the, what everyone, the collective history are very different. Yeah. A lot of good topics. I, I miss having more of these conversations. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so, so, so much. Yeah. And hopefully I'll talk to you sometime soon. Yeah. We'll be in touch. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you like face to face, sort of. <laughs> Virtually. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye.